Sabbath School kids. Welcome to Primary Sabbath School for April 18. So welcome back those that have watched before and we welcome anybody new watching as well. This is the primary class for Chetland. So we will start with what we're thankful for. Um, today I am thankful that last weekend I got to watch a movie about Jesus and what Easter weekend is all about, his death and resurrection, and it just really reminded me how much I am loved by God, so I am thankful for that. So let each other know what you're thankful for this week. And we will start with our prayer. And again, you can text me your prayer requests this week at 250-788-5339. All right, let's um, close our eyes and we will pray to Jesus. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the past weekend that was Easter and the reminder of how much you love us. Thank you for each boy and girl that is watching today. Be very close to them. Give them... A special hug from you today Jesus we love you and we thank you for giving us Bible stories that we can learn more about you amen all right so for our mission today um, it's about Billa and she is from Finland and she's 17 years old so today I want you to or this week look this up on YouTube and read her story. She tells a story about a miracle um, that happened to her family. So the site is bit.ly slash b-i-l-h-a dash t-u-i-t-o-e-k. So check that out. It's an amazing miracle story. All right. Okay, so we are going to get into our lesson, and I have some bags here. They'll stand up. It doesn't want to stand up so well. Okay, I have four bags. Can you guess what are in these bags? Hmm, probably not, my guess is, but we're going to find out. We are going to look at what is in each of these bags. So we'll start with this bag. So you can see on the bag it says something. What does it say? It says love in action. You are right. And inside of each bag there is something. Let's look inside. Now, okay, what is this? like a book. So I want you to tell me how you can use this to share God's love with someone. So it's a book. What can you do with this book to share God's love with someone? Well, if you have a baby brother or sister, reading a book to them would definitely share God's love with them. Or any book Bible even, if you read that to someone who can't read anymore, we can read to someone who can't read um, yet or who is old and tired and it's hard for them to see and to read. So love and action can be in reading somebody a book. Let's see what is in this bag. Oh, let me turn my bag around. Again, here's Something that can show love in action. Ooh, what is this? A dirty old broom? Let's see if I can get it out of here. All right, so a broom and a dustpan. What do you suppose you can do with a broom and a dustpan that would show God's love to someone? I bet you all know what you can do with this. You can sweep up that mess underneath the kitchen table after each meal, and that would show love to your mom, wouldn't it? Or 
the mud by the door of your house right now. Spring brings a lot of mud, so sweeping that mud up would show love to your mom and dad um, every day. All right, you may have had some other answers there. Here's another one. Love in action. What's in this bag? Oh, that's funny. It's a cup. So, what on earth can I use a cup for to show love to somebody? Well, if you can't think of anything, I can think of one thing. If your dad is outside busy working in the yard, fixing something, especially if it starts to be a hot day, what can you do to show love with a cup? You could fill it up with nice cold water and take it out to him. That would really be showing God's love to your dad when he was hot and sweaty and didn't think that anybody even noticed that he was fixing the car or cutting the grass or fixing something on the house. Sometimes dads what they do don't get noticed. So you pay attention and see if there's something you can do to show God's love to your mom or your dad or a big brother or sister or a little brother or sister. Sometimes they need a little extra care, don't they? And you could give them a drink of water in their sippy cup. All right, we have one more bag, love in action bag. Let's see what's in there. This is very light. Can you see what this is? This is a pencil. How do you suppose I can share God's love with a pencil? Hmm. Well, you can draw a picture for somebody. You can write a letter to somebody, right? Or maybe you can write a list of things that you're going to do for your mom and dad and put it up on the fridge as a surprise. There's lots of things you can do with a pencil that would show God's love. So, was it easy or hard to think of how you might use these objects in these bags to share God's love? I think it's probably pretty easy. Was it easy or hard for Jesus to find ways to help others? Well, our Bible is full of stories about how he helped others. And I think he found it pretty easy to help others. That's what he was all about, wasn't it? And what was the greatest way that he helped us? My board here has maybe a hint. He died on the cross for us, didn't he? That was the greatest way that he helped us. And our Bible story today is about just that, how Jesus sacrificed himself for us so that we could have everlasting life. God also sacrificed by allowing his only son to die for us. When we do kind things for others, it's one way we can share God's love and sacrifice for them, with them. Today's message is, we serve God when we share his love with others. Okay, let's get rid of these bags. All right. So our lesson today is the day Jesus died. Do you remember from last week's story when Jesus walked to the hill where he would be crucified? A man named Simon, a man who was just visiting the town that day, was forced to carry Jesus' cross. We learned about that last week, didn't we? Simon must have been shocked at what was happening. It's very likely that if he could have stopped the execution, he would have. But he couldn't stop anything. So he helped Jesus do what he was being forced to do. Simon carried the cross to a hill called Calvary. There he laid the cross down on the ground. Two other crosses were already up with a robber bound to each one of them. A place for Jesus waited between the two crosses. The soldiers were laughing and making fun of Jesus. They nailed a sign over 
um, the place where Jesus' head would be that said, and I'll show you on my sign here, said I-N-R-I. Can you read what that says? That's a Latin phrase, I believe, that these letters stand for. And I, I can't really say what it says, because I don't read Latin. But I can tell you what it translates to, which is, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. So they made that sign, and they put it up over the cross where Jesus was going to be. Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. Then they made Jesus lie down on the wood and they began to do something awful. The soldiers didn't tie Jesus to the cross as they did the robbers. No, they nailed Jesus to the cross. And their hammer was much bigger than my hammer, and their nails were much bigger than my nails here. They would have to be to hold a, a big person up on the cross. Wouldn't, wouldn't they have to be? First they hammered huge nails into Jesus' hands. And then they put his feet together and nailed his feet to the bottom of the cross. So, they nailed Jesus, like I was saying, to the cross. Nailed his feet, nailed his hands on the cross. Some of the people standing around made fun of Jesus. Others sneered, If you are God's son, save yourself and come down from the cross. They tempted him to do a miracle for himself. But what was special about Jesus' miracles? They had never been for his own benefit. They were to help others. Jesus never did any miracles to help himself. Remember, Jesus had been up all night at his trial. You can imagine how tired he was and how hungry he must have been. He was hurting and he could hardly breathe. The crowd stared at Jesus, wondering what would happen. Some of them shouted at Jesus. Even the robber beside Jesus asked him to do a miracle and save all three of them. But then one of the robbers said to the other, We deserve what we're getting. But this man has done nothing wrong. And he said to Jesus, Remember me when, you're, when in your kingdom. And Jesus promised that robber that he would. Jesus did one more thing for others before he died. He asked his disciple John to take care of Mary, his mother, and treat her as his own mother. And John agreed to do so. Suddenly the sun disappeared. It was as dark as the darkest night. It stayed dark for three whole hours. Jesus felt so lonely. He felt the shame we all feel when we do something wrong because he carried our sins and took the blame for us. Finally, through the darkness, the people heard Jesus say, Father, into the, thy hands I give my spirit and he died. Suddenly there was a huge earthquake. People threw themselves on the ground, graves opened, and some people were resurrected. In the temple, the great veil between the holy and most holy places tore from top to bottom. The Roman soldiers standing at the foot of the cross stared in amazement. Truly, this was the Son of God, they said. God and all of heaven were watching and crying. God loved his son so much. It was hard to see him suffer and die. But God also loved us so much that he was willing to make that sacrifice to save us from our sins. While Jesus was on the cross, who was he thinking about? 
He was thinking about his mom. Yeah. And his disciples, probably. And he was forgiving those who were killing him. Do you think Jesus would have gone through all that pain and suffering and then try to keep us out of heaven? I don't think so. Does Jesus want everyone there in heaven with him? You bet he does. So here's the question. Are you willing to make small sacrifices to share God's love with others after Jesus and God have made big sacrifices for you? So our message is, we serve God when we share his love with others. And those can be just tiny little sacrifices. A little bit of our time to read to our brother or sister. A bit of time to help mom or dad. A bit of time to talk to a friend or a grandpa or grandma. It's not much for us, is it? All right, our memory verse today is... John 3.16, it is my favorite verse. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. John 3.16. So, to help you learn the memory verse today, we're going to have the girls do a part, and then the boys, okay? So... When you see your part, then you say it out loud, and we'll learn the memory verse that way. All right, so girls, for God so loved the world, boys, that he gave his one and only son, girls, that who, whoever believes in him, boys, should not perish, but have eternal life. All right, and we can all say where it's found, John 3, 16. Okay, I think we should do it once more. Here we go. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. John 3.16 Good job, guys. Very good. Okay. And we're going to do one last thing today to help us spread the love. And that is, we're going to make little hearts. So these are just little colorful hearts and if you don't have colored paper don't worry you can just take white paper and color it first then you'll have your colored paper. So we're going to make this. This is just a folded heart. I didn't um, cut it to look like a heart. We folded it to look like a heart. So what you're going to do is take a piece of paper. Okay. If you, have, if you have square pieces of paper, great. But if you don't, you can take a regular rectangular shape piece of paper and then take one corner and fold it right over so it's even with the side. Okay, so then it will look like that. And then you just take your scissors and cut off this strip over here. Okay? You cut that strip off, then you will have a square piece of paper, like this, okay? So then the next thing that you have to do is, if you are holding your paper, take your bottom left corner, okay, and fold it up so that the point of it comes in between the top two points. Okay, I'll show you that again. So you take that bottom left corner, bring it up so that it's in the middle, and sticking out a little bit like that. Okay, that's your first fold. All right. Now, your next fold is, you take your, now your bottom right corner here, 
and you actually are going to fold it straight across so that it's even with the bottom side on the left. So see that again? You take that bottom right corner and fold it straight across so that it's even with the bottom left side. Okay? And now you have a heart shape that's very pointy, kind of like a cat. All right, and then the la last step is, here's your pointy cat, <laughs> is to fold over those points that you see. So the top two points you can fold over, and the side two points you can fold back. All right. Now you have something that looks a lot more like a heart. So you can make a whole bunch of colors. And you can put these hearts up around your house. You can maybe put them on the windows where people driving by your house can see them. Now, look at how pretty a bunch of colored hearts look. You can add something to your heart too if you want to. You can add a cross on your heart in the front or you can write the words spread the love on your hearts or just put them up like they are around your house or on the windows to help you remember to just take some time to spread God's love to those in your family and those in your community in some way. God loved us so much that he sacrificed by dying on the cross for our sins so that when we say to Jesus, Jesus, I love you. Thank you for forgiving my sins. I want to be with you in heaven. He has died for us. He took the guilt of our sins on him so that we could be in heaven with him someday. We have a wonderful, wonderful Savior. So these hearts can hopefully remind you of that this week. Um, and I did forget earlier our offering. If you have your offering jar at home, you can put your offering in it. Um, when we're all back together, we'll have a lot of offering, won't we, to give back to Jesus for the mission field. Let's close our Sabbath school today with prayer. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for your love. We love you so much and we are so thankful that you died for our sins just because you loved us so much that you wanted us to be able to someday live with you in heaven. Please help us to spread the love today and this week. In your name I pray. Amen. Bye-bye. We'll see you next week.